the list is so long. Who so are many... we to make that decision? I feel so no much pressure. You know well, what? I'm not going to do it. We are Constant Comedy Podcast, hosted by Art Bell and Vinny Vivali, and we constantly annoy you with our opinions. You know, we really had to look to the classics to see what was one of the great comedy movies of all time. And Some Like It Hot, you know, is just was just such Wilder. a crazy, funny movie in so many ways. It was a farce. And... One of the reasons I loved it is because it had one of the great comedy setups of all time. You remember the setup? These two guys are musicians, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, and they witness a gangland style. Which, by the way, can I just say that that opening is terrifying. Like oh, yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe it. They're, they're know, even, the they kill seven is, guys on screen. You know? I know. This is a comedy. I think they really killed people when they made the movie. Well, you uh, know, it, it brings up the interesting question, you know. I always say this, like, if you juxtapose laughs with, like, something really horrible, that's like the that's like the comedy in its purest form. It's like when, you're, when your mom plays peekaboo because you go like this, and the kid thinks the mother's gone forever. And then you go like this, and the kid starts laughing because his mom's back. That is the definition of comedy. So this was kind of the same thing. They start with this really, really horrible thing, and then these guys have to run away. They run away, and they get away, and... In order to stay away from the, the these guys killing them, they join an all woman band, and the and they they have to dress up as women with Marilyn Monroe to get the job. And Marilyn Monroe is in the band, and the the first scene where they are dressed up as women and these two guys walk out as women is so funny. They're on a train platform. Let's go, Josephine. Got a girl, Geraldine. And. You can tell they're guys, but they walk up and there's all these women there and a guy and they just sell the whole thing. They're just so good at it. They figured it out so quickly. He says, oh, hi, girls, you know, welcome to the band and everything like that. (laughs) And then Marilyn Monroe, when she walks up, oh, my gosh, she was so she's Marilyn Monroe, for God's sake. I mean, I think that was her best movie. Oh, she was so great in that. And she was so beautiful. And both the guys instantly fall for it. Look at that. How she moves. It's ultimately Tony Curtis who who you know woos her. But there they are. They're women with this all women band, and and Marilyn Monroe is beautiful. And they go down to Florida. Great setup. How about setup. Um, the person that falls in love with Jack Lemmon's character? A great oh one of the greatest gosh. movie ending lines of all time. Go art. You got to set it up and give the line. Joey Brown plays this very wealthy guy. And he has a very funny face. And he falls in love with the Jack character Lemon. Actor. He falls in love with the Jack Lemon woman. And she leads him on, you know, because what else she can she can't blow her cover. So she's just like, oh, you know. And then she realizes that the guy's falling in love with her. And he proposes to her. And she's like, the next scene, she's in in her bedroom in the in the hotel room telling tony curtis i'm getting married to this guy i'm getting married she's all excited about it and he says tony curtis says you can't marry her you can't marry him you're a guy you can't do that you're gonna have to fess up he goes no no i'm gonna i'm gonna marry him and then we'll get divorced on the first day and i'll get all his money and that was that was the thing so then at the towards the end of the movie at the end of the movie aren't they they they, on a boat Right, they're on a boat. They get on a boat because they're going to go get married. Man. He says, "He says, look, you can't marry me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a natural blonde." Right. <laughs> he says, "And I, and I, you know, I don't, I don't think your mother's going to like me." And he's and he's going through all this. And he says, "Oh, for God's sake, you can't marry me." And he pulls his wig off and he says, "You can't marry me because I'm a man." And Joey Brown says, "Well, nobody's perfect." <laughs> and that was not supposed. That was not supposed to be the last line of the picture. There was supposed to, oh, there was supposed to be no. There was supposed to be a shot of Marilyn and Tony Curtis kissing, right. you know, like a, an embrace shot. But it was so funny they left it as the last line of the movie. Oh, so good, yeah, so good. Crazy. And that's some like it hot. Also, we agreed on is the producers art. Could I just give you my favorite line from the producers? The Go ahead. funniest line. Good. When the verdict comes in from the jury and Bill Macy, who was, and people might know him as Maud's husband uh, from the TV show Maud from All in the Family spinoff, comes out, how do you find the defendant? Very guilty. <laughs> you know, just, just as, for the producers was a Mel Brooks film and it was about some guys who wanted a 
wanted to have a play fail because they decided, okay, if the play fails, we could actually make more money. Right. We'll just oversell the shares in the play. So they find the worst script and the worst director and the worst actor. They get the worst everything and they, they know the play has to fail. And the play is called Springtime for Hitler. And they mount this thing as a musical. Now, I just want to say there that that was very controversial when this film came out. Right. You know, to have Hitler at, portrayed as a musical comedy star, you know, with all these girls singing Springtime for Hitler and with Germany. With bagels on their headdress. Yeah, yeah. it was just, <laughs> it was in such bad So taste. soon after, it, it, only because the movie came out, I believe the early 70s, like 60s, it was like like less than I know like it was, 30 years from World War II. I mean, it was still... I think, I, I think the comment too soon came out around that time. Yeah, right, right, right. As applied to that movie, because... People were really offended, but, you know, to be fair, Mel Brooks needed the world's worst premise for a movie, and that was it. Hey, and another thing, by the way, um, he won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay for that film. Uh, that's how he got his oh, right, O in the EGOT. And he won the Tony for, um, for, for for the musical version of it, which there's a, there's a song in the in the on the Broadway musical at the end where they try to figure out what happened because now because the movie because the premise the show being a hit they overinvested they took more money than they needed figuring it was going to be a loss what's the big deal and now they 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 couldn't afford to pay everyone back because it was a hit and there's a great song in it called Where Did We Go Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's funny. So uh, yeah, so uh, the producers absolutely on the list and uh, put Gene and that that movie put Gene Wilder front and center. Yes, because he played this kind of accountant who was originally you know against the whole thing. He was just an accountant. And mm -hmm. He was the one who came up. And he said, "Hey, you can make more money this way." And Zero Mostel, who was so perfect, starts yelling at him because because Gene Wilder says, "You can't actually do this." He says, "No, we're going to be rich," and he starts screaming at him and yelling at him. And Gene Wilder's cringing, and he pulls out a blanket, oh, a blue blanket. blanket, and he starts <laughs> sucking his thumb with the blanket. And Zero he presses, yeah. Is that? Wait a second, is that a blanket? And he says, "No, no, no, it's not a blanket." And he's, he's embarrassed. And it was just how, how about when, when when he was trying to seduce the little old ladies to invest in the show they were like uh what what, what what's the name of the what, you know what, who should we make the check out to he goes make it to the out to the name of the show cash <laughs> <laughs> great oh, great great lines yeah that was a a beautiful movie and it's it does hold up i've watched it it recently. really does our yeah. third movie is uh spinal oh, right right rob reiner as the Rob filmmaker, Reiner and he made the Guest, film. Yeah, Harry Shearer, right. Mike McKean, and a and a, a load of supporting actors like Billy Crystal, I'm his money, I'm his money, uh, Paul Schaefer. It was it was so good. Do you know how that movie was born? How the concept came? I don't. I what I read was that uh, Rob Reiner, Christopher Guest, these guys all knew each other. They were all um, based in L.A. They they were doing. Uh, I think a midnight special or like one of those in concert shows mm -hmm. and they were in, and, and I think they were parodying um, a rock band and during the set up set setups they had the idea to be like wow we should imagine this were real we were a real band and uh, it's such a popular movie in the mainstream obviously over over decades but like rock bands who are the subject of it have adopted it as their favorite movie like they all agree with it and they all say it's about them like Ozzy Osbourne would say oh you know that's about me um the the the, the Christopher Guest's character but yeah just, you know what I I gotta make a, a little shout out here to Christopher Guest he was a writer for Lampoon and he plays he plays what's the guy's name it had a funny name he was a writer for Lampoon and the first time I saw and I loved him before I ever saw him the first time I saw him was uh in a National Lampoon show called Lemmings, which was right. off, off Broadway. And it was Christopher Guest, Chevy Chase, and John Belushi. The three of them. This is before Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. 
And I walked out of there, I was 16 or 17 years old, saying, oh my gosh, I just saw the next world's biggest comedy star, Christopher Guest, so you, he's going to be a you major, said that about because him he, was, he yeah. was the best guy, I mean, you know, the other guys were great, he was the talent in that show, he was so good, he sang, he wrote all the songs, he, it was just incredible, and then, as it turned out, you know, he you, became... You, you were right, club, I mean, but, coming up with, with the uh, speaker that goes up to 11. The numbers all go to... 11. Look, right across the board. Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, the and then amps go up to 10. Exactly. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere. Exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Oh, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. Just One, all these. Oh, that thing. that that whole thing with and that must have been improvised, I guess, huh? A lot of it, I think, was improvised. You know, and they set up a structure, but the characters were so well defined that it came from the characters that they had created for themselves. And but Vin, that that one scene that you just mentioned, this one goes to eleven. You know, talk about a movie getting into the zeitgeist. I mean, that is now said by a million people no right. I, I, you know it goes to 11 and it was all based on that character christopher guest character saying when we need a little extra we have this amp right here because this one goes to 11. <laughs> and, and, play the game, and, and, and rob reiner says what, what do you mean i mean it's just like the ones that go to 10 it's just divided into 11 seconds he goes no no this goes to 11. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it became that's a phrase now everybody uses I, I don't know if you remember this. I remember it very well. And I think I have a Betamax tape of it. They appeared on the Joe Franklin show, which was a right? local New York yeah. talk yeah. show. Almost like a practically cable access, but it was on Channel 9. So it was on. And then eventually 9 became a super station. So when cable was starting, it was all over. Joe Franklin had no idea they were not real. And he would always fall over like the biggest guests. Oh the, he really had the guests and the smallest guests. And that was hysterical because they were playing themselves. Uh, it's just a, a great movie that really holds up after all these years. And almost uncomfortable to watch sometimes because... It, it, cringy, cringy comedy. Like, remember Bruno Kirby driving the limousine and trying to make a comment? Because I think uh, that Harry Shearer, one of the characters is reading Sammy Davis's biography, Yes, I Can. And Bruno <laughs> Kirby goes, you know, they should have called it Yes, I Can. Frank Sinatra says it's okay. <laughs> and they're like, which is a funny line, but they're having none of it, and they just shut the divider on him. In the oh, limousine. that was funny. Oh, it's just so awkward and great. And that's why that movie is in our top three.